Hi there, Mrs. Elke here. Today we're doing a different kind of art. It's called neurographic art, having to do with neurons and how they move through your body. And this art is actually supposed to be more therapeutic, so something that's kind of good for you. You can take maybe a day that you're feeling super stressed or anxious, and you can kind of put it all into the art, and hopefully it'll help you calm down and just kind of get into a zone of creativity instead. So this is the picture of my neurographic art design, and it's really, like I said, therapeutic. I really enjoy doing this. So I'm gonna show you the steps on making your own neurographic art, and you can really have fun with this. Mine, you can see, is kind of an abstract design, but you can also use this technique for something more um, recognizable, like you could do a butterfly or something in the middle, or I've even seen people that do a portrait of someone in the middle and then connect these lines, you know, to make this neurographic design. So follow along with me and I will show you the steps to make this art, okay? Have fun with this and hopefully it kind of relaxes you and you can get into that creative zone, all right? Enjoy. If you're liking these videos, please subscribe to my channel below so that you can get notifications on when I add more videos to my channel, all right? Thanks for watching, guys. To begin, I have a Sharpie marker. I have watercolor paper and I have watercolor paints and a paintbrush. Now, as I begin, I'm going to kind of think about all of the stresses in my life. Um, I'm starting with my Sharpie and I'm just gonna kind of attack the paper with whatever kind of crazy emotions I have here and notice that I wanted my first mark to go off the page and my last mark to go off the page so I'm trying to kind of start at one end and then get my way across to the other end by creating these wild lines once I feel like I have enough lines down on the page I, it's an optional choice, but you can add recognizable shapes if you want. So I thought it would be fun just to kind of throw a couple circles in there. And you can see I'm just tracing them from the inside of my tape here. For my picture, these circles are going to be kind of helping me contain the chaos of my stressful day. Neurographic art is all about taking what's within, feelings that you have within, and kind of getting them out onto the paper. All right, now this is the part that is kind of cool. So anywhere that two lines cross, I'm going to kind of soften their crossing by kind of adding these curved lines to every little part of the intersection. So if you think about maybe like two roads that are crossing, you want to kind of make that intersection a little bit more wide. So it's easier to, to turn your little car as you're going on each of the roads. So I'm kind of going to each of these sections. I'll zoom in so you can see better. And I'm adding a curved line where each of the lines connects so that each of the little intersections you can see is quite a bit wider. This part could be pretty therapeutic too, just kind of focusing on each of these little intersections, gradually going around, trying to widen each of those areas so that they're nice and curved. I'm going to go ahead and do that all throughout my entire picture. Find every line that intersects and add those curves to each of those little intersections so that they soften them a little bit.
If you need to move to a smaller size Sharpie for this, especially if you have lots of intersections, you could do that too. The reason I'm using a Sharpie is so that when I paint, the marker won't smear. So Sharpies or waterproof pens work the best for this step. As you can see, I'm just trying to kind of go over each little area that intersects. And if it's too small, I just colored it in. So that's fine too. If you find that some of your shapes are just too tiny, you can just kind of color them in with that marker. Right, now that I have all of my intersections nice and curved, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start painting. And you can really paint these however you want. Use whatever color scheme you want. I love turquoise, so I decided to start with a color that I love. And I decided that I wanted these circles to kind of be the calm amongst the, the crazy background. So, I decided to use different shades of blues inside of my circles. And so what I'm doing is I'm getting the area wet with paint and then I'm kind of going back and making the edges of each of my little shapes a little bit darker with the same color. So I'm kind of jumping around filling in each of these little sections with turquoise which is my favorite color. And then I want kind of the outside edge of my shapes to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to kind of go over some of the edges um, and make those a little bit darker. So that it gives it just a little bit more depth. There's really no rules on what colors you use or if the colors have to be in a specific pattern. It's really just kind of whatever you feel like doing. You could use all different colors or even just two or three colors for your entire painting. So I decided the turquoise is looking nice to keep it with the blues. I love different shades of blue together. It reminds me of water. And since these circles could be kind of like bubbles, maybe that, that worked together. zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'm just trying to get my shape nice and wet with the paint. You can even add just some water to help the paint spread around. And then I'm adding a little bit of dark or more saturated paint along the edges just to make the edges a little bit darker. 
than the inside of each of the shapes. I decided not to have any of my shapes touching large sections of the same side. Some of them are touching corners, but I wanted to kind of jump around a little bit as I painted these. Now I'm going in with a different shade of blue. So I started with turquoise and this is a little bit different. This is more of like a cobalt blue. And I'm doing the same steps that I did um, with my turquoise. Now I'm being a little bit risky here because I'm painting right next to some shapes that I already did. And so if my water touches the paint that's there, they can bleed into each other. So if you're doing two similar colors like I am right now, it doesn't matter. But if you're doing two really different colors, you may wanna make sure that the shape is dry before going into another shape. Because you can see a little bit of my turquoise is kind of bleeding out into my blue, which doesn't bother me because these are similar colors. You can see I've added all of the shades of blue in my bubbles and I wanted to go with some higher contrast for the background. So the opposite of blue is orange and I decided to pick kind of more of an orangey color. You can see that I've started filling in the shapes around the bubbles with orange and now I'm going to go into a little bit more of a pinkish red color to fill in some of the other shapes. And for these larger areas, I'm trying to get some nice rich color and especially along the edges. And then I'm also kind of playing around with the watercolor because it's such a fun medium. And I at times will just like to drop plain water into the paint while it's wet and that creates kind of some of these fun shapes that you see like in my orange ones. So play around with it. Watercolor can be such a fun and relaxing medium to play with and test out. If you wanna get really crazy, you could even sprinkle a little bit of salt while the paint is wet. That creates some really cool effects and textures with the watercolor paint. Here I'm just adding some random dots of paint or water just to give it some interest.
now that I have all my warm colors in there I was trying to decide if I wanted to just leave the rest white or to add a little bit more paint and I decided I would go ahead and add a little bit more paint um, add some yellow so I'm trying to keep it a little bit lighter and kind of go with the color scheme and you can see because my red is not dry it is bleeding into my yellow and I didn't really want that to happen but I was not very patient and I just wanted to just dive into the next color so if you don't want your colors to bleed into each other make sure they're dry because I have that nice red blob that's starting to ooze into my yellow that I don't really want to be there maybe that's an effect you like but in this case I didn't want that there I'm going to do the same thing in the top just adding some of that nice light yellow I wanted to keep it kind of airy and you can see I didn't learn from my mistake and I went ahead and did it the same thing into two more sections that were still wet and it ended up having some colors bleed up into that yellow as well especially right there and the nice thing about this when it happens is that watercolor is really easy to fix when it bleeds you can just take a Kleenex and just kind of blot out those areas so I went ahead and just kind of wiped those areas right out and watercolor paper makes that easier and you can see now I don't have that bleeding anymore and it just kind of lightened up the yellow too Thank you so much for watching and doing this with me. I hope you found it therapeutic and I hope that this is something that you will try and do every once in a while. I definitely enjoyed it and found it to be a very nice exercise.